Hi guys, it's Ella Harp. I'm getting ready to fly down to Los Angeles in a couple of hours to play some gigs. I got harp and banjo all packed and ready to go, but I have about a half an hour to kill. So I figured I would take you guys along for making myself a new shirt before we go. So I'm gonna be using this lightweight merino wool that's the same kind of beautiful blue color as my top that I made a few days ago. And I'm gonna be making a two piece t-shirt. So there's not gonna be any separate pieces for the sleeves. It's just going to be two pieces, a front and a back sewn together. I'm going to hem the neckline, but probably leave the rest of it raw and let's get started. So I'm gonna be using a t-shirt that I've already made and this is using the same basic pattern, which is a front piece, a back piece and a hemmed neckline. But if you don't have something like this and you're just using a regular t-shirt, the only important thing to note is that as you're laying it down on the fabric and getting ready to cut, make sure that you give yourself extra space and kind of curve the sections around the underarms. If you're going to have a sleeve, it's going to come like this and then it's probably gonna be cut kind of straight under the arm. And you're just gonna to wanna to make sure that you curve that section to allow for free movement because that's the nature of a shirt like this. I want this one to be a little bit narrower in the waist, so I have tapered these in just a little bit. And just make sure that if you're going to change something, you duplicate it on the other side so that you have a mirrored image. One fine summer in May, oh, John Doe, the bookkeeper working on and what I'm going to do now, because I made this slightly tighter, is I'm going to flip this over. But I made sure before I do that to put a notch there where I want the bottom to be. So now I can remove this and I can fold this piece over and I can line it up with that bottom edge right there. Back piece has now been cut. I'm going to duplicate that for the front piece. I personally don't like to go crazy cutting necklines when I first start because I like to be able to adjust that as I go. So I'm going to make both of these much higher than they will be in the end. Push all your papers and bleed. The machine is just a chain and he's just another Because this is knit fabric and I wanted to have some give, I'm going to be sewing the shoulders and the side seams with my machine on a medium width zigzag. So you grow grow. Now the shoulders have been sewn together. I just want to double check that they're reasonably lined up. So I'm going to fold it in half with the edges of the sleeves lined up. You want to make sure that they're as equal as possible. So in this case, this one is just about a quarter of an inch longer. So I can either sew it a quarter of an inch longer to the inside here on the neck on that one side, or I can cut the very end of this sleeve off. And I think I'm just gonna go ahead and cut the end of it. Cut that edge off and everything is all nicely lined up now. I'm able to start from the sleeve all the way down to the end, again, using a zigzag stitch. With the basics of the shirt now done, I'm going to put it on and gauge how I want the neckline to be and then cut it from there. I want the neckline to come down to about there. I'm going to factor in how much the hemming of it is going to take up, so I'm going to make it just a little higher than I'd like. I just like to take my little scissors and make a small notch and then I can take the shirt off and match everything up. We're going to call this good. Just a little hole right there. So now I have that notch and I have lined up the shoulder seams. Now from that notch, I'm going to cut it here all the way up to those seams. So I do my necklines in one of two different ways on knit shirts and I either fold it down once and then again, and then just hem that down as it is, or I will fold it down like this and then fold it partially back up like that. And then I sew either way down with a straight stitch. While the rest of the shirt, I will use zigzag stitches for on the neckline is the one exception because that's an area I would like to add more rigidity to. So I do not use a zigzag stitch there. It also gives it a slightly more professional look and I haven't had any trouble with them coming apart. In the interest of time today, I have just gone and done a regular folded neckline. I find that hemming works best in general, especially with knits, if I fold it to the outside. It seems to me that if you fold it to the inside, things curve to the outside, and if you fold it to the outside, things curve to the inside. And in this case, I would much prefer that it curve to the inside as opposed to flaring out in a strange way. You'll notice in the corners that because of the way the shoulders were stitched together, you will see a little bit of this seam right there, which personally does not bother me because the edges are gonna be raw anyway. As I'm sewing, I'm trying to maintain, what well, I'm trying to avoid, I should say, keeping any pressure on this because I wanna make sure it's not being pulled in any particular direction, just that everything that's being fed in is nice and even. You <laughs> my creaky knee lover pedal. It's always fun. Go back home to his small apartment, dishes and newspaper bills that he never sent. Sit in your corner and think about money. So 
that's how it turns out. I'm happy with how the neckline turned out. It is nice and flat, or flat enough for me. The bottom's a little uneven, so I'm going to cut it so that it's all straight. I might do a little bit more on the sleeves, and then I'm gonna call it a day. Bottoms, I am happy with this thing. Thanks for watching along. I'm gonna go to LA now. <laughs> Have a great day.